Okay, so um, I'm going to record a video on how do you use Excel to test for um, differences in correlation coefficients. So this is how it looks like. Let's say I have a piece of data for two, um, for example, two of my nephews, okay, called Kenny and Johnny. So this is the height in centimeters based on their age. So both of them are born one of them is 30 cm, one of them is 33 cm, and then I map them up to 10 years. Okay. So this is the height over 10 years. Okay. So my question in this case, my question that I want to find out is, is um, Kenny growing at a different rate compared to Johnny. Okay. Basically, are they growing at a different rate? So this is the question that I really want to ask. So how do I do that? We can actually use correlations or rather co regressions to do that. Okay. So essentially, I have to find out two things. For example, I want to find out for, for Kenny or, or for each of them. I want to find out what is their height is a variable, let's say B1, B of the H plus C. Okay. So I want, if I find for jo Kenny and Johnny, I have two Bs, okay, two gradients. What I really want to find out is, is the gradients, in this case, I can call it B1 and B2. different. Okay, so you can think about it this way as I will say that for Kenny, I'm using B1, C1. Okay. For Johnny, I'm using height is equals to B2 of his H and C2. So I'm actually comparing the coefficients because rate is the gradient. The coefficients is the gradient. Okay. So how do I actually do that? Simply, I will just do a regression for both of them. Okay. So let me do my regression. Let's say I do my regression for Kenny first. Okay. Variable X is the H. And I use the labels, my output range, I just put it, um, let's see here, okay? So in, to make this clearer, I call this Kenny. I do the same for Johnny. Okay, so just change my, my Y, my X remains the same because X, X is the H. My output range obviously I have to change or else I will um, kind of, I will change it to here. Okay, so that's it. Then this is the values that I want. Okay, so for Kenny, Johnny, what I'm looking at is I'm not going to care about this, the correlation coefficient. ANOVA is for correlation coefficient. If you have viewed my videos on um, regression, that, that will tell you. Okay, so I'm just going to truncate all this up. I'm just going to hide it. So this is a table that I, I'm interested in, and I will say this is Johnny. Let me expand or rather wrap this line. Okay. So what is the what is the regression for Kenny? It will be his height is equals to the coefficient, which is ten point oh four five of his h plus the intercept 29.95 okay while for johnny will be his height oops, equals to coefficient 7.97 let me get 973 of his h plus the intercept which is 30.01 
um, let's say zero two. So in reality, I am asking whether is the the gradient is ten point zero four five significantly different from seven point nine three nine seven three. Okay. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is my null hypothesis of this is, is that the gradients are equal. B1 equals to B2. And B1 or and B2 are basically the two gradients, the two 10.045, right? And 7.93973. Okay. My alternate hypothesis is, is that B1 is not equals to B2. We have that clear. Okay. So how are we going to do the test? We have to go online to find out a test suitable for comparing two coefficient, two correlation coefficients. Okay. And the easiest I can find is actually from this paper. Um, is um, by Robert Paternoster using the correct statistical test for the equality of, co of regression coefficients, which is exactly what we want. Okay. And this is actually published, you can go and read them yourself, in this journal called Criminology, volume 36, um, 36 issue number four in, 2000, in 1998. Okay. So in short, what they have explained and the the correct formula for the test is actually using a Z test. And this is the equation. So you take B1 minus B2, and usually we have an absolute, divide by the standard error of B1 and B2. Okay, But this has to be squared. That means you are talking about the standard error square, which is similar to your standard um, deviation and your variance. Okay. So we have this standard error of B1 and standard error of B2 in our in here. This is standard error of B1 and this is standard error of B2. So essentially, we just have to use these two sets of numbers. Okay, so let me just highlight. These are the two sets of numbers we have to use. The yellow represents the um, numerator that we have to use. The um, let's say bluish one represents the denominator we have to use. So what we have to do is, let me just write out the equation here. The Z, the, or the rather Z statistic will be your um, absolute of B1 minus B2. Okay. Divide by the square root of standard error of B1 square plus the standard error of B2 square. Okay. So essentially, this is the equation. Okay. And if you go to this paper, it actually explains to you how, we, how you use it okay, using marijuana. So the effects of male and female, the coefficients, the gradient is 0 0.1, for male is 0 0.004, the standard error is 0 0.094. For females, the standard error, uh, the, the gradient is 0 0.221 and so on. So that the difference, 0 0.221 or rather 0 0.404 minus 0 0.221 is 0 0.183. Okay, And then the standard error, you square it, standard error, you square it, Okay, add them up together and then do a square root. Okay, so exactly the same thing. So let us just run it and we see whether can we find what is the Z, or rather what is this Z value. So we take the absolute, okay, and here we have the square root. Just build our equation first. Absolute, what do I, I it doesn't matter which one divide, Minus which one? I take B1 minus B2. Okay. For the square root, I will have to take this square 
plus it doesn't like the space plus this square uh, my z statistic is 6.76 i have to convert it into a p value so my p value is really just use a normal distribution and you're not familiar with it you can go to your insert function okay so what is my x my x is really this z value mean the standard um, normalized standard normalized normal distribution mean is zero standard deviation is one cumulative it asks you whether you want a cumulative function if it's cumulative function it will take the area from negative infinity up to the x value so we want that to be true okay but we want the area beyond that that means what is above 6.7 so we take one minus this area and we get a very small probability okay it means that in this case what it really means is the the probability that the growth rate um, I'll say the probability that any growth rate equals to Johnny's growth rate is 6.7 times 10 to the power of minus 12. So in this case, it is a very tiny percentage. It means that you are talking about 6.7 times in a billion. Million, billion, trillion actually. So this is way low than our 5% chance. So we can say that we reject the now hypothesis and based on that we accept the alternate hypothesis and what this really means it means that the oops, Kenny's growth rate is not equals not equals to Johnny's growth rate. This is our conclusion. Okay, so this is a simple test for you to test for, a simple way for you to test the differences in the correlation coefficient. You can do that for any number of coefficients, co correlation coefficients um, that you want even for multiple regressions as well. Okay. So I can actually test whether it's 29.95 significantly different from 30.1 or 30.2. You can do that. Okay. So that is a simple way for you to take it off and hopefully you have some try and um, let me know you have some problems. That's all for today. Have fun. It's, it's, it's,